In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let's take a moment to call to mind our sins and in expressing our sorrow to our God, open ourselves to the God's mercy so that we might better prepare for word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who for the relief of the poor and the formation of the clergy endowed the priest St. Vincent de Paul with apostolic virtues, grant, we pray, that a fire with that same spirit we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Corinthians. Consider your own calling, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. Rather, God chose the foolish of the world to shame the wise. And God chose the weak of the world to shame the strong. And God chose the lowly and despised of the world, those who count for nothing, to reduce to nothing those who are something so that no human being might boast before God. It is due to him that you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, as well as righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, so that as it is written, whoever boasts should boast in the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, blessed the man who fears the Lord. Blessed Blessed the the man who who fears fears the Lord. Lord. Blessed the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Blessed Blessed the the man man who who fears fears the the Lord. Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Blessed Blessed the man man who fears fears the Lord. Lord. Well, for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice, he shall never be moved. The just one shall be in everlasting remembrance. Blessed Blessed the the Lord. Fears fears the Lord. Lord. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast. He shall not fear till he looks down upon his foes. Blessed, Blessed the, the man, man who, who fears, fears the, the Lord. Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted into glory. Blessed Blessed the man man who who fears fears the Lord. Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Today is the feast of St. Vincent de Paul, and I'm sure those of us who drive up here to the church often enough uh, know that right over here on around the corner is that old uh, building that was the St. Vincent de Paul Society store. Uh, St. Vincent had uh, two ministries, as we heard in the opening prayer. Uh, one was his outreach to the poor. Uh, he kind of had this idea that a parish existed to assist those who needed it not to help the rich and the famous get more richer and more famouser. Uh, and his other thing was he felt that many priests didn't understand what Jesus was talking about in today's gospel. And so he begins a reformation of the clergy. And both of those are things that are, are continuing. They, ongo they go on all the time. Outreach is not anything new in the church. It's been there since day one. Um, and vocations have always been an issue and a problem. Uh, we kind of go through cycles where you get a lot and then you get a little and then you get a lot and you get a little. Right now here in the United States, we're in one of the dips. We're not getting a whole lot of vocations. My faith tells me that will turn around because it has in the past. But we can look at today's two texts, I think, and, and maybe get something out of these. Um, here, St. Paul in his letter to the Corinthians says, oh, well, my goodness me, God chooses the poorest of the poor, the weak of the world, to shame the strong. Well, take a look where the vocations are. They're not in the first world. They're not in the United States. They're not in Europe. They're not in uh, any of the advanced nations of the world. They're in the poorest of the poor. They're in Africa. They are in the rural parts of South America. They are in the persecuted parts of Asia because it's the poorest of the poor to shame the strong. And unfortunately, something gets in the way that it doesn't allow us to experience the sense of shame that we should because it's pride gets in our way. But you know, you can see that throughout history. Uh, Ireland was one of the most persecuted nations until it got its independence in 1922. And the vocations there were skyrocketing all over the place. We had hundreds of, po of Irish priests coming here to the United States to be missionaries because they had too many over there. Poland was one of the most persecuted nations in Europe. And look at the number of, of vocations that, that continue to come out of Poland because of the persecutions, choosing the poorest of the poor to shame the strong. So sometimes when we're praying for vocations, perhaps we should pray that many young men and young women who, who have vocations to the uh, religious life turn from pride and humble themselves to what God is asking of them, to serve the poorest of the poor. It would give us a new concept and a whole new look to our clergy. It would give a whole new look to our religious orders. And so our prayers for vocations, while they continue, should always be based in these texts that we just heard today. What does the Gospels tell a priest he ought to be doing? Proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, teaching, and curing every illness and disease. That's what the clergy should be doing. Not having bingo parties, not having lavish houses to live in, which I shouldn't say because I've got a lavish house to live in, but to look at what are the genuine needs of the community around us and go out and help solve them. 
rather than look for somebody else to do it. So anyway, uh, Jesus wants vocations. The only thing that stands in his way is us, is the people he's calling. Now most of you I don't think he's calling to a priesthood or religious life, but you may know someone who he is calling and to foster that vocation, just say something kind to them. You know, all it took for me, believe it or not, was I was in the fifth grade and uh, Albert Onweller was the associate pastor at the time and he came over to, to school as he was leaving the parish and I'm in the fifth grade and all he had to do was say, think about the priesthood. And I obviously did. And forever after I blamed Bishop Onweller for my vocation. <laughs> Which was really funny because uh, he was in the parish I was at before I was here and I would mention that and he'd say, and I take credit. <laughs> it's that simple. We know the people. All we have to do is tell them, think about it. Let us raise our voices in prayer on this festival day honoring St. Vincent de Paul. And as our first prayer ascends to heaven, let it be for our church that we might never lose sight of the opportunities for outreach to help the poor, the needy, the sick, the dispossessed, those who are oppressed by the world around them, that the church might always be there for them. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray too for those who lead the world's nations, especially those that have great wealth, that they might humble themselves and share some of it with the nations that have so very little. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray too for all of those who uh, are seeking government office, especially those who will be uh, debating tonight, that uh, rather than twist and turn the words, they answer questions honestly and they share their deepest hopes for what they can truly accomplish rather than picking on one another, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray too for all those who continue to suffer from the effects of long COVID, that God might touch them with his healing power and that Jesus the Christ might heal the sick just as he did in today's gospel, we pray to the Lord. Let's pray too for all of our firefighters, first responders, for our police officers, that as they go about their business tonight, they might be safe on our streets here in Toledo and throughout our nation. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray too that those efforts that are being put together by churches and church leaders and civilian leaders and government might truly help us to end the rage of violence that's happening in our city. We pray to the Lord. Well, loving and almighty Father, as we celebrate Vincent de Paul, we pray that we might be inspired by what he was, your servant. We pray that we might serve you by assisting and answering these prayers in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread which we offer to you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual food. Lord, may the mingling of this water and wine make us partakers in your divinity as you humbled yourself to share in our humanity. 
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For it is through your goodness that we have this wine which we offer to you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual drink. Lord, be pleased with this sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins. Cleanse me of all of my iniquities. Thank you. My sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. O God, who enabled St. Vincent to imitate what he celebrated in the divine mysteries, grant that by the power of this sacrifice, we too may be transformed into an oblation acceptable to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Daniel our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with those around us a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Renewed by this heavenly sacrament, O Lord, we implore that just as we are prompted by St. Vincent's example to imitate your son in his preaching of the gospel to the poor, so too we may be sustained by his prayers. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.